I have no idea how we signed Rafael Devers to such a team-friendly contract, but two years after being the American League MVP, he's already making his case to be the National League MVP this season as the hottest hitter the Rockies have. He gave us a walk-off victory last episode and now has seven home runs on the season, two more than any other player in the league right now. It's obviously extremely early. We can't really talk MVP at this stage of the year, but it's been a fun start to the season, and we continue today with a couple wins over the Seattle Mariners, moving to 8-4. and four. David Geronimo goes yard as Luis Severino goes 7. Dominguez closes that one out, and then the next day, a little more offense this time as Ty France and Josh Bell go yard, and Jake DeGrom continues a dominant start to his Rockies career. After winning three straight, we begin a three-series road trip, beginning in Atlanta. We take game one, but we're going into game two. Rockies up by one, it's bottom of the ninth. Two on, two down, it's all up to Eloy Jimenez. One of the pickups for the Braves in free agency this past season. Dominguez trying to get another save and he quickly gets ahead. 0-2 on Jimenez. And that's a bouncer through the left side, a base hit. The wave around the runner and Geronimo does not even attempt to make the play. And this game is tied. The first save blown this year for Sir Anthony Dominguez. That brings up another former White Sox. Yoan Moncada strikes out as we go to extra innings. It's Nick Solak at the plate with the runner on second base. And he's quickly ahead 2-0. That's a line drive and a leaping catch at second base. Ozzy Albies takes that away. And that would have given Colorado the lead. So we go to our bench. Now it's Josh Bell. He had a great spring training, now a chopper to shorts. And this is not the start to the inning you hope for. Two down, it's up to Brandon Nimmo in a lefty-lefty matchup, and he's out in front. That is the inning. All the Braves have to do is get one against our previous closer. It's Taylor Rogers, And he's trying to keep this tied to go to the 11th inning. Fly ball, shallow center. Can you tag on this? Ryan Reynolds under, and there is no attempt to tag. Reynolds has the best arm, I believe, in this outfield. Ozzy Albies, fly ball left field. Now Geronimo goes over, and there's no test on his arm this time. That's the best throw I've ever seen from him. But now Christian Pache, two for four, a homer and a triple. And Rogers starts with a strike, good sinker, bottom of the zone. 0-1. And that's a base hit to center field. Moncada waved around, and that is your ball game. The Braves walk us off in game two. They win it in 10 after the blown save by Sir Anthony Dominguez. Tough way to drop this one, especially getting those first two and just having to get the batter one more time. But great day for Christian Pache, ending up only a double shy of the cycle. So two games left in this series against Atlanta. I wanted to feature this game today because it's Andrew Heaney getting the start. And we haven't seen him much in the series for a while because he tore his ACL early last season. We will see him soon, but for Atlanta, it's Bryce Wilson making the start. Just his first of the season apparently had some bullpen appearances already. And we're going to open with a drive to left center field, and that is extra bases for Brandon Nimmo. A stand-up double to get the game started. The lineup is a bit different, too. I like giving a lot of players off days to keep them fresh. So we have Josh Bell, Xavier Edwards, and Austin Martin all playing in this game. Two batters later, Nimmo already at third. Here's Geronimo on the ground to Story, who fumbles it immediately. And Nimmo scores. 1-0 Colorado. And that brings up Rafael Devers. 2-0. That's a base hit to left center field. Maybe more. That will split the outfielders. And Devers has another extra base hit. Josh Bell will hit behind him today. Playing first base. And that's a hit to right field. 
Devers has to hit the brakes, but the Rockies trying to do more damage now with two away. Here is Xavier Edwards getting the start at second base. 1-1. Fouled off the slider. That's a good one. He's had some hittable pitches in this at-bat. And strikes out to end the first. But the Rockies get some production early and hand the leadoff to Andrew Heaney. It's start number three, and his first two have not gone well. I do think that uh, the ACL tear is going to have a big impact on the final chapter of his career. But here he is facing the former Rocky. It's Trevor Story. Of course, we traded him back in season one of this series. A trade that hasn't really worked out for us, and that is foul. 1-2. Got him with the fastball. Good spot there for Andrew Heaney as he picks up the first out. And that'll bring up Yoan Moncada. So they pick up the two stars from the White Sox. That is down the line. We'll play the bounce, and that's only a single. Brings up Ronald Acuna Jr. Curveball missing inside. There's a strike on the outside, two and one. Count moves the two and two, and the curveball misses low again. Don't want to miss in the zone. And the payoff pitch is low, so Heaney walks Acuna. Two on now with one away. And that's going to bring up Jimenez, and that is foul as he falls behind. This count goes even, and good changeup fouled off. Now missing outside, full count, Albies waiting on deck, another foul, and eventually striking him out on the curveball, he chased it inside. Heaney still has some pretty good out pitches it seems, but this is a lot of pitches here for the first inning. He gets Albies, but the ball gets away from Nunez and he's going to reach on that. So the bases are loaded suddenly. Heaney needs to get out of this inning. 2-1 count, and a chopper to short. This is Austin Martin with the flip over to first. So not the best first inning, but technically Heaney strikes out the side. He picked up three strikeouts. Now in the previous game, Austin Martin, I believe, recorded his first MLB hit, which was a home run. Here's his first that we're actually going to see in a played game. Base hit center field. Top of the order again. This is Nimmo. A bit jammed on this high fastball. And that is the inning. But Austin Martin getting a chance to play. It's really fun to feature these young players for the first time. We go bottom two, hoping for a faster inning. Ground ball to Amart at short. Two down. That brings up the pitcher spot here. And for Heaney, this 0-2 is aired out to right. And it's... Just a six-pitch second inning. Really good coming off of the long first. Top three now. It's Brian Reynolds. Base hit left field to start it off. We do get back to Devers. Another hitter's count. And Wilson kind of pitching around Rafi. Green light, but fouls off the fastball over the plate. Fouls off a better fastball. 3-2. Now out in front. Good contact. And a very good at-bat for Devers as he eventually draws the walk. Putting two on for Josh Bell. He's going to start at first base when it's his time. And this is turned on. Hit well to right field. It'll stay fair. And that is gone. A three-run homer for Josh Bell. Number two on the season. It's so big having a player of his caliber coming off the bench. It's so easy to keep players like Ty France fresh when we can give Bell a quick start and you know he can fill right in in the middle of your order and hit the long ball. Rockies off to a pretty solid start offensively. Now 4-0 we go bottom three where Story strikes out for the second time today. Later in the inning, runner on first, two down, Jimenez over to third. Devers, long throw, got him. And Heaney makes it through three scoreless. Pitch count in the low 50s. Eight hits already for Colorado. Let's go back to their offense. Brandon Nimmo led the game off with a double. And here in the fourth, this is also going to left center. How about his second double? A double-double for Nimmo today. 
in scoring position now and this is Brian Reynolds batting second and that is high in the air out to deep right center field and it's going to be out of reach but stays in the park as Reynolds flies around second Nimmo already scored it's an RBI triple and a very forgetful start for Bryce Wilson we got after him pretty early in this game and what else he going to do with that fastball right over the middle so his day is over, and the Braves are having to go to their bullpen. And they'll bring in the young pitcher, Kyle Wright, making appearance number six. And he's really struggled against lefties. Lucky for him, Rafael Devers is up next. And he strikes him out. Up and in with the slider, but Devers just can't get a piece of it. Another lefty, Josh Bell, a bouncer finding its way into center field, an RBI single, 6 nothing. How about Xavier Edwards, 2-0, and that's crushed to right center field. This one's deep and off the wall again. Edwards makes his way to second base. Bell gets halfway there and turns back, safe at third base, thankfully. All these lefties ready to face Kyle Wright. Two in scoring position. Nunez rolls it over. And the Braves end the inning at last. It is sure looking like a good day for Colorado. Hoping it continues for Andrew Heaney. He gets Albies out in front of the changeup. That first inning didn't look good. But it was not a sign of things to come oddly enough. Heaney finding the zone with ease and doing a great job with his two strike pitches getting strikeouts. So maybe there is some hope for him to bounce back this year after the knee injury. We go top five, Austin Martin, three for three in his major league career and he makes it four for four. I think at this point you have to give him the ball when he eventually records his first out. That's gonna be pretty special. Hasn't happened yet. Brandon Nimmo's next. Already two doubles to left center. Does he have anything left for us today? And there's a drive out to right center field. Brandon Nimmo have a day. Way out there. His third extra base hit as he drives home his fourth homer of the season. And it's 8-0 Rockies. I think we're putting that blown lead from the previous day behind us. Bottom five. That's down the line. A fair ball. And just like the previous time it happened, play that bounce off the wall perfectly. It's only a fancy single. Kyle Wright hitting. They know he's going to keep pitching, so it's a rare relief hitting chance. And Kyle Wright delivers his very first major league hit. So it's kind of like when Daniel Camarena had his chance to hit. I think that was an 8-0 game, by the way, where he hit that grand slam. But Heaney picks up a double play, a big one. Runner at third base now. Trying to put up one more zero, and it's Moncada. I loved his command after the first inning, just doing such a good job getting strike one. And then his curveball was on point. There's the changeup. It's not where you want it. But it gets the right result. Five shutdown innings for Andrew Heaney. Really impressed with this third start for him this season. But are the Rockies done offensively? They're already dominating eight to nothing. Devers the other way. That's going to be extra bases. The hot streak for Devers just continues. He puts together another extra base hit. Now we go to Xavier Edwards. And that one is crushed deep to right field. Trying to keep it fair. And it's foul by five yards. Pretty close. 1-1. One, one. Oh, he did not hit this one quite as well. A dribbler. Right the throw. Not in time. So you go from almost a home run to an infield single. That's still pretty cool. How about Austin Martin? He's four for four. Can he stay perfect? That misses inside. And I can't remember right now if he had at-bats previously with the Blue Jays. There might have been an MLB debut a couple years ago. But so far with the Rockies, he's at least perfect. And 3-2, he got the slurve. Up in the zone. And finally, they get him out. 
That should have been 11 to nothing. Bottom six, and Heaney stays in the game. Two on, one down. This is rolled slowly to Devers, but they're going to turn two, and Heaney gets the quality start. Six shutout innings. A great day for the Rockies. That's not quite finished yet. Brian Reynolds, deep to right field. I think whoever got Brandon Nimmo's home run ball might also have that one. It is nine to nothing. Here's Ryan Vallade in the game here late. That's a base hit center field. And for Vallade, it's his first career hit. I didn't realize that, so I accidentally skipped this little sequence here. But a lot of fun firsts here in the episode. Bottom eight. Here's a deep drive to right field, and the Braves are able to avoid the shutout as they get the solo home run. Number seven. For Yohan Moncada trying to catch up to Devers. Zach Veen gets an at bat in the ninth, and he slashes this one into left center field. Veen around first base, he wants two, and he's got it. All the young players coming off the bench here to fill in in these late innings. Brian Reynolds, two down in the ninth. Going the other way, base hit right field, and here comes Veen. The throw comes in. Yeah, that wasn't the best idea, but we're already up eight. To close this game out, we turn to Alex Colome, and not Ethan Small, actually, because I didn't want both of our long relief guys tired going into the next day. Got to plan around, you know, what's going to happen a day from now, two days from now sometimes. So Colome comes in, ends it. And the Rockies celebrate a 9-1 victory, one of our most dominant in quite some time. 20 hits, 9 runs, and a lot of production from the young players. It's great to see. And of course you have the great start from Andrew Heaney. He is now our number 5 starter, no longer the ace like he was back in like Season 2. Hopefully he's able to have more starts like this one today. 8 strikeouts and 6. Very nice. So we take two from Atlanta. Still have a game four against them. And in that matchup, we win seven to two in dominant fashion. This time getting six on the board in the fourth inning as Turner comes back to the starting lineup. He has a double, a triple, and Devers hits another home run. You'll notice here that Clayton Kershaw pitched in this game and he also pitched in the previous full game just in those innings I didn't have any clips for. But yeah, he has regressed now, and his stats are pretty similar to like Andrew Heaney, at least his overall is. But now, we are on to Milwaukee, and thank you to whoever had suggested to turn on Critical Situations, a feature I forgot about. Here we have Jake DeGrom going for a no-hitter. He's already had like three fantastic starts and he's trying to one up all of them, including a complete game shutout. That is strike three. He's only eight outs away. Christian Yelich at the plate. DeGrom missing outside. Now in the last time we saw him start, he had six walks and still had a really good day. So at times he is, you know, walking a lot of batters. Keston here up next as Yelich takes second base. He's in scoring position. But Milwaukee's got to get a hit to bring him home. Ooh, curveball. Almost got it. And the fastball misses low. That's two walks here in the seventh. A mound visit just to settle him down, not to take him out of the game. But now Omar Narvaez, and again, struggling to find the strike zone. Now a chopper to the right side. Devers on to second, and the return to first, not in time. But a fielder's choice does not break up a no-hitter. Two down, Billy McKinney. In the air, right field hit well, sending Nimmo back, and he's got it! No-hitter, still alive, seven innings in. Pitch count now for DeGrom at 88. We head to the eighth inning. David Fry is the hitter. Changeup is in there. Nice to get that quick strike. And the fastball is going to right center. Nimmo in the gap. Lays out and can't make the catch. Fry breaks up the no-hitter. 
with this leadoff double. We saw David Fry last episode be one of the best Brewers hitters against us. And it's him who breaks up the no-hitter as Nimmo wasn't really close on this dive, but he tried to keep the no-hitter going. So Bryce Terang is up next. DeGrom is still in the game at this point. 3-1, missing inside another walk. Over 100 pitches and still trying to complete the eighth. Popped up shallow center with two down. In comes Reynolds, sliding catch to end the inning. Nice play there as we focus now on securing the victory. And Reynolds sends us to the ninth. DeGrom comes out, and Sir Anthony Dominguez will get another save opportunity. Number seven on the season. Christian Yelich leads off. And he reaches for one, popped up into foul territory. Nunez slides to make the catch just like Reynolds did. Back-to-back -back plays with basically the same catch. Which sliding catch was more impressive, do you think? Reynolds coming in or Nunez having to work out there as a catcher? What do you think? Hira, 0-2. Dominguez trying to put him away and... 3-2, misses outside. The walks are starting to add up here. Omar Narvaez, 2-2 count. That's going to get into right field. A single for the Brewers, and that's going to bring up the tying run represented by Billy McKinney. That's a chopper. Over to short. It's passed into left field. And a run will score for Milwaukee as they break up the shutout. Can Dominguez get this under control? Already blew a save this episode, and I'm not sure David Fry is the hitter we want to be facing here. But Dominguez gets ahead. 0-2. This is outside again. 1-2. and two. Got him looking! Strike three! Two down! Finally, we're past David Fry. Now Tyrone Taylor. It's all on him. Dominguez, 0-2. Oh, come on. Slider just missed, 1-2. Popped up into center field. Reynolds comes in, he camps under it, and this game is over. We do not get the no-hitter, we don't even get the shutout. But we do pick up another win. And Sir Anthony Dominguez gets another save, although... These haven't been the prettiest saves. I think that he looked better last year just based on what we've seen so far. But the next day, he's got another chance to close a game out. Now, Milwaukee already has a runner in scoring position. Must have been a leadoff double or something. And he's got to get three outs to avoid blowing the save again. He's ahead. Now, even with Tyrone Taylor, that misses wide. Over 20 pitches the night before. Back at it once again. Got him out in front. Strike three on the slider. Big out number one. Off the bench now, Colton Wong. A great contact hitter. That's into left center field. Reynolds over. Two down. One more to go for Sir Anthony Dominguez. Here's Bryce Terang. In the air, left field for Geronimo. Over a few steps, and this game is over as well. Dominguez with a better save as Corbin Burns picks up another win, this time against the Brewers. We won in the start he had against them in the previous episode. This time Burns goes five and a third, gave up two runs, had four strikeouts. Devers also went yard. So... David Fry has suddenly become a player that I have to pay attention to. He's a utility player who can also play catcher. He's got some decent ratings here. He's a really solid bench player to have. Just had to take a look because he was giving us problems. I had this whole, like, one more game thing going, so we're not done. We're now top nine against Milwaukee. Already won the first two games. Down by one. Base hit left field for Geronimo. Rounding third will tie the game. Couldn't play it cleanly. I'm not sure it would have made a difference. A blown save for Milwaukee. 
and they turn to a rookie pitcher, five foot six, 160 pound Clayton Andrews. Rafael Devers is the first batter he faces, and he gets ahead, 0 and 2. And that's a cold strike three on the corner. A couple great pitches for Clayton Andrews as he picks up his first major league strikeout. Two away. France, that's out in front, almost down the line. One and one. Behind it there. On the corner again. One, two. Unbelievable stuff from Clayton Andrews. On the corner time and time again. As we go bottom nine, Milwaukee blew the save, but now a chance to walk the game off. So we're going to Scott Oberg here. ERA looks high, but hasn't pitched very many innings. And that's a strike three called on the outside to Derek Fisher. Oberg's got some really fun at-bats in this series. There are so many, like, three-pitch strikeouts we've had with him. Fly ball to right center field. They cannot answer in the bottom of the ninth. So again, we have extra innings. Clayton Andrews stays in. He strikes out Brian Reynolds. Three strikeouts already. And he's got really good stuff, it seems. So he's obviously a lefty. So we bring in Johnny Schaefer to face him. And that's in the air. Shallow center. Down for a hit. And with the late start, we're not getting home. But it's a base hit. Now can we just bring home that run at third base? Nick Solak, 99 contact against lefties, but he's out in front. Full count to Solak. Got him out in front. Another changeup right at the knees. Four strikeouts for Clayton Andrews. And now he's going to face Xavier Edwards. Out of the young players on the bench, he's been the go-to guy. And Edwards up the middle delivers a base hit, and the Rockies get run number six. I really like Xavier Edwards. Inning not done, though. Brandon Nimmo to face Andrews, and fouls off the changeup. A rare miss over the plate. One, two. Bottom of the zone, strike three. Unbelievable pitching here from Clayton Andrews. Now it becomes a save situation, but this is not Sir Anthony Dominguez coming out because he had simply pitched too much over the previous couple days. So Lucas Sims is getting this chance. Christian Yelich is at the plate, bottom 10. And did he go around? Yes. That's strike two. Yelich, three for three on the day. On the ground. Runner has to stay put. That's one down. Big out for Sims. Keston Hira hitting under 100 with runners in scoring position. He's behind 0-2. Got him looking. Strike three. One more to go for Lucas Sims. This for a sweep against Milwaukee. Breaking ball is over. Strike one. Fouled back. Schaefer won't get there. Milwaukee down to their final strike. Struck him out swinging, and that is your ball game. Sims gets it done, and the Rockies win again. What a team this looks like early in the season. This is easily the best I think we've ever looked in this franchise. We've got such a good core lineup. The pitching looks really good, and even the bench is making an impact. And of course, an MVP candidate, at least in month number one. We also win the next day against Miami, and we are now 15-5. and five. We find ourselves ahead of the LA Dodgers right now. 11 home runs now for Rafael Devers. He would be first place in MVP voting, while Jake DeGrom would be first place in the Cy Young voting. Nobody could have ever seen DeGrom playing this well for us in the first month of the season. That was a really fun episode. So many fun victories. This team just finds a way to get it done. Whether it's a tight game or they can dominate from the beginning. Hope you're enjoying the action here in the newest season with the Colorado Rockies. 
please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll try to get more episodes out as fast as I can. These have been some big episodes, and we'll see if they continue to stay that way. I just end up getting so much I want to share. Have a great day. I'll see y'all next time.